this video won't technically be a CAD tips video as much as a grading and a jargon video. Before I continue in the grading series that I'm posting, I wanted to go through some jargon so that if I'm using it, uh, you'll know what I mean. So when it comes to grading, I like to say that there are three types of slopes. You have a longitudinal, a cross, and a true. And what do I mean by those? A longitudinal slope is going long ways along a feature or along a brake line or something like that. And in this, in this example, I will be using this yellow line to represent the direction of longitudinal. The cross slope is the slope that's perpendicular to your longitudinal slope. So to represent these blues, this blue line direction. If I was to draw contours manually, along this blue line and let's say i wanted to do a one percent slope so numerically one percent is 0 0.01 and if you divide one foot if i'm drawing one foot contours by 0 0.01 you get 100 meaning that contours would be every 100 feet apart along that line but to represent that i will just quickly put some ticks here so if i draw me a 100 foot circle and I put a tick mark at that intersection of where that circle is along my longitudinal slope, it would cross right there. And conversely, another 100 feet down would be the second one. And as you can see, I drew my line 200 feet long. Now, if I was drawing contours manually or grading this, and I had a longitudinal slope with no cross, the lines would be perpendicular to my longitudinal slope. So if I took that line, draw that as a line instead of a polyline, do that out of habit a lot. If I draw that as a line, it would be perpendicular to my longitudinal slope and they would be every 100 feet apart. So I could draw those tick marks or if I had no cross, I could just easily offset these um, 100 feet apart to represent contours. So that would be a slope along my longitudinal line with no cross slope. Now what happens when I add cross slope? So cross slope, as I mentioned, is the slope perpendicular to your longitudinal. And what that will do will rotate these lines to a specific orientation. If I had a 2% cross slope. That's one foot every 50 feet. So I would know that if I offset this longitudinal line 50 feet in each direction, these lines, any point along the longitudinal perpendicular that meets this line would be one foot lower. So if I was drawing this manually, and this is going, let's say, going downhill, so 100, 99, and 98. This is a 100. If I went down the cross slope to this point, this would be 99. To get the orientation of that contour, I find two points that are 99. So let me label this real fast, just to help with demonstration. So that point is 99. And this point is 99. To get the orientation of my contour, I would connect the two dots. So now I have an orientation of a contour. I don't want to offset this line. You might want to say I need to offset that 100 feet because my longitudinal slope is 100. So if I offset this by 100, you can see that that line mark is not passing through that point. Well, maybe 100 was off. It needs to be 50. It looks more like it would pass through it, right? If I extend it to this line, I see that it doesn't meet it as well. What I would want to do would be to copy this line at this orientation, this contour, to my next tick mark. And now I have two lines, contour lines, that represent a 1% longitudinal slope and 2% cross slope. And that leads us to our third slope, what I will call the true slope. So remember I just said we couldn't offset these. When I offset something, 
I've just made the slope between these two lines perpendicular at 2% by offsetting that 50. So your third slope is the true slope, which is the slope between two contour lines. So if I drew this perpendicular here, that line, how long is that? Let's see, it's 44.72. So if I did one divided by 44.72, I can see that my true slope is 2.2%. So 2.23% is my true slope, but my longitudinal is one and my cross was two. So my true, this is steeper. Almost always, if you're designing this and drawing this in this method by using longitudinal and cross, your true slope will be steeper. If your intent was to have a true slope be a specific thing, say three to one or four to one, or you wanted it to be, you would offset these and your longitudinal and your cross would vary. So it depends on your design constraints and what you're trying to achieve on how you draw these contours. The main takeaway for this video was I wanted to make sure that we all understand what I mean when I say longitudinal cross slope and true slope. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and feel free to subscribe. We'll use this language in the upcoming videos we're going through more tips on how to utilize civil 3d for grading